What a night, huh? Got a little water on me during the baptism, so don't be paying attention to that during the thing tonight. Guys, man, tonight we're talking about the, the start of a new series. The start of a whole new series called Sloganville. And I know you know that because I told you a minute ago, but, but here's the key to this series. We're going to walk through tonight what God expects of us as believers and in the next few weeks, we're going to walk through what God expects of us as XL, as the church, and what He expects of us as a body of believers that is supposed to work together to grow His kingdom. So we're going to be talking about a lot of different things that I think you've probably heard of or seen before or at least heard somebody else quote from some part in your life. But that's four weeks. So what I will encourage you to do, if you notice, you look around, we have a couple of empty seats that are available for people if you want to bring other people with you. Uh, so we're not sold out just yet, but we will be as soon as you bring all those people to fill these seats up. So get them here for the next four weeks. Uh, if you can get them here tonight, that would be really tricky, but that'd be impressive. But we'd love to have you have them with you in the next three weeks of this series so we can look at where Excel is headed, what God has called us to do, and what we see for the future. So, But this first one, um, I, I think that most of you will um, enjoy it and remember it. Some of you were uh, a little young, I would think, at that time. But see if you recognize this slogan. When you drive to Wendy's and order a single, you get more beef than the Whopper or the Big Mac. Where's the beef? At Wendy's, you never have to ask, where's the beef? All right, how many of you remember that? How many of you have never seen it before in your life? You're like, where's the what? What's that idiot woman talking about? That's a Wendy's commercial talking about when she walked in, she ordered a burger and opened the, the bun off the top of it and couldn't see the beef, and she wanted to know where the beef was. And um, we have a special honor for, from Wendy's tonight. For those of you that were here with Blake and Nina, all the family, y'all just stand up for me, will you? You need to give it up for these guys. Wendy's is also buying y'all dinner, so um, make yourselves at home at the Wendy's as soon as possible and enjoy dinner on them and us. So thank you guys for being here tonight. <coughs> but here's the deal. Why in the world would where's the beef mean anything to us as people that come to XL, people that consider ourselves believers and people that try to live for Jesus? What's the where's the beef thing got to do with it? And if you didn't see that original commercial, the concept is that Wendy's has more beef in their hamburgers than any other place. So whether you agree with that or not, still a funny commercial, and the little lady is just hilarious as you watch these things as we do different kinds of clips and stuff. So, but the concept is she wanted to know where the beef was. And I want to read a scripture passage to you this afternoon that will help us understand why in the world that might matter to me and you. In Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 13, it says this. It'll probably pop up there for you. There is much more we would like to say about this, but it is difficult to explain, especially since you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen. You have some of you paying attention now. You're like, what are you saying? Did he, what? What? You have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. <clears throat> Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's Word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. Let me explain to you what they were doing at this time. These were the spiritual leaders, <clears throat> and they wanted to teach the people some of the deep truths about who Jesus was. And they said to that group of people, listen, I would love to teach you guys this, but you're not far enough along yet to even hear it. That's what they considered the meat of the teaching. And this was a group of people that should have been to a point where they are following Christ long enough and they've walked in this relationship long enough where they know 
what Jesus is, they know who he is, and they are ready to hear these deep things about him, but they weren't. And what they come to is that these people basically spiritually are still drinking milk when they should be eating solid food. You know the process of a child being born, and they start out drinking milk, and then as they grow, they eat everything ever created. You know that, right? By the time they're in high school, they've eaten you out of everything you've ever owned. You had to sell cars to feed them and stuff like that. That's just my family, but that's beside the point. But you understand that as you grow, you need solid food. And what they said and what these spiritual leaders and the teachers at that time were saying to these people is, hey, you are believers in Christ. You have committed and said that you follow him, and yet you are still not ready for solid food. And you are still not ready for the beef of who Jesus really is. And my question to us tonight, and, and, and I ask it for us, and I ask it really for our community and for the, the country in which we live. Where is the beef spiritually in your life? What are you taking in in your spiritual life right now? We had these two baptized tonight. She's been saved since she was 12. Uh, he's been saved 11 weeks now. And they took a step tonight toward being everything that God wants them to be. But let me explain. If that's the last step they ever take, they will never get past the spiritual milk that we're talking about tonight. And if in your life you became a believer a while back and, and you got baptized and you felt really good about it, fired up and ready to go, and that's the last step you took, then you're still drinking spiritual milk when you should be teaching other people the Word of God by now. And I think what happens, what has happened in our world, what has happened in churches all over our country, and what happens here at XL, is we get to the point where we're good, we've got our relationship with Christ, we understand that, we're all fired up about that, now let's sit here and enjoy that. And what God teaches us is that He calls us to take steps, to take our relationship further and become more of what He calls us to be says this in Philippians 2.12, Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. How many of you are members of a health club? I got it. All right, Chris, where's Christy? Christy works at the health club back here in the back, right? Christy, how many people do you see come in the health club and join and get their little cool little card and then never see them again? The majority of people. That's called... Uh, I was there yesterday, ma'am. Where were you? Oh, okay. So the majority of people... She's right most of the time, but I was there yesterday. The majority of people sign up for a health club at what time of year? January. Why? Because it's after the holidays. We've all made the ridiculously stupid New Year's resolution that we're all going to be healthier. Right? And you go down, and they know this at the health club, so they give you a discount that month. Like, you know, January is like 10 bucks off or something, and you get like 90 years of membership and whatever for 100 bucks. I don't know. Because here's the deal. They know you're not coming. Okay, they know you sign up in January, and 90% of the people that sign up in January don't come back by March. And if they can get you to pay for that up front, no offense here, Christy, if they can get you to pay for that up front, they know you're not coming back. And I have on my keychain, wherever that is, my little card that says I get to go to the gym. If I don't go to the gym, that card makes no difference in my life. Zero difference in my life. But for some of us, it makes us feel better to know that we have the card. And guys, what we're talking about spiritually tonight is the same exact thing that we do physically in our lives. We go to a time where something's really exciting and we walk through this, this wonderful time in our lives and somebody tells us about Jesus and we give our lives to Christ and we get that card and put it in our pocket and we never do anything else with that. Or we go through a crisis in our life. And it's a tough time, man, and something's falling apart, and we don't know how to handle it. And somewhere in there, we give our lives to Jesus Christ. And then we put that card in our pocket, and we never do anything else with it. And that is the majority of people, listen to me, that's the majority of people in our country that say to us that they were believers in Christ. Just like the majority of people that are members of that club don't show up. The majority of people in this country, because you can look at the stats, 
People will tell you that they're a believer in Jesus Christ. People in Rome, Georgia will tell you that they go to church somewhere. They didn't go today, and they didn't go last week, and they won't go next week, but they are a member of that church on the corner. Some church somewhere on some corner. Why? Because we feel pretty good if we've got the card in our pocket, no matter what we're doing with it. And what God teaches us and what he's showing us through his word is that we, and I'm not, I'm not condemning anybody in the room, I'm telling you a problem that we have. We love to get in the situation, we love to get the membership card, and we love to benefit from, but we don't always want to do the work to grow the relationship. And I want you to see what Jesus teaches us about that in a different passage in Mark chapter 11, verses 12 and 14 through 14. It says this, The next morning, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. He noticed a fig tree in full leaf a little way off. So he went over to see if, it, if he could find any figs. I think that's a fig newton, right? Is that what's on those trees? I'm not a big fan of the fig newton. But there were only leaves because it was too early in the season for fruit. Then Jesus said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit, eat your fruit again. And the disciples heard him say it. Then Mark 11, 20 to 21 is when they're coming out. The, in the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree cursed, you cursed, has withered. Here's the situation with the fig tree, because many of us read that story and we're like, okay, first of all, why is Jesus so ticked off at a fig tree? All right, like he was hungry, we understand he was hungry, but you don't go wilting the whole thing and killing it dead because it didn't provide for you. Here's the illustration that Jesus was setting at that time. At this time of season, when he walked by that tree, there was not supposed to be fruit on it. Okay, so we look at it and go, well, dang, he made the whole thing wither and, and it wasn't even supposed to have fruit on it. That's true, but listen, it's also not supposed to have leaves on it. And for a fig tree, when it has leaves, it is presenting to you that it has fruit. So Jesus went to that tree because it had leaves saying, hey, I have fruit over here if you're hungry. Jesus walks through the tree. There is no fruit, so the tree is cursed. What in the world does that mean? That means the problem is not the fact that the tree didn't have any fruit on it. The problem is the fact that the tree said it had fruit and it didn't. And in our spiritual lives, the problem in our lives today is that we, not that we don't have fruit, not that we're not living for Christ, but the problem is that we call ourselves believers, and we tell everybody in the community that we're believers, and we tell people here at XL that we're believers, and we want to do everything in the world for Christ, and we still have no fruit. That's what got the tree cursed. That's what gets us into a relationship that is not pleasing to our Heavenly Father, because we say we're going to believe you, we're going to live for you, we're going to do everything you want us to do, and by the way, I'm going to go sit down and do nothing. That does not please him. And what he's called us to do in our relationship with him, it says, we just read it, work hard to show what Jesus has done in your life. And it is very easy. We talk about it as fire insurance all the time. People that give their lives to Jesus so that they don't have to go to hell one day, but that's all they really want it. They'd like to live like hell on earth, but they don't want to go to hell when they get done. So they want to give their lives to Christ and then do whatever they want to do. And Jesus shows us through the example of that tree that that's not how he works. Because when you give your life to Christ, he expects something from you. When, he give, when you give your life to Christ and he takes you in as part of his family, at that point in time, he begins to expect something of you. And you say at the same time, well, well, does that mean I have to work for my salvation? Does that mean I have to work really hard to make sure Jesus doesn't kick me out? No, it does not. Because salvation is free. But with salvation comes expectation. And he shows us that all the way through Scripture and different things that he teaches us. But I'm going to tell you, if you want to see where, answer the question, where's the beef in your life? What is the deal going on in your life that you've grown into and doing? Here are the expectations, some of them that, that we'll talk about tonight. Number one, we should have a deeper understanding of God's Word as we grow toward Him. Now, here's my question. We've had XL going for three years now. Anybody know? Is that right? Gina, about three years? Do you know more of God's Word today than you knew three years ago? Some of you have been coming to XL for two years, three years, every night we've ever had it. 
Do you know God's word better today than you did back then? Because the fear is for us to give our lives to Christ and not develop in his word. It's no different than, than starting a marriage relationship and never talking to each other after that point. Well, sure, let's get married, but you just stay at your house, I'll stay at my house, and we'll just move on like we didn't. Because that's our relationship with Christ when we don't get into his word. Scripture teaches us that in 2 Timothy 2.15. It says this, Work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, who, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. Other versions say who correctly handles the word of truth. Guys, for us to sit back and say, well, I'm not a big reader, I'm not a big thing, you know, this, I don't really like to study a lot, I don't really like to look at stuff a lot, I don't have much time. What we're basically saying is, God, I appreciate what you've given me, but I'm not putting my time into, re into learning your word. And I'm not going to do the work that you've called me to do to present myself to you as one approved. Because I don't really have that much time. And there are two commitments that need to happen here. Number one, our commitment to you from Excel is that we will always bring God's word in a way that you can understand it. Your commitment needs to be that you will take on the responsibility of reading and studying God's word outside of here. Because if this is the only time you ever hear God's word and you don't do anything with it after this, you will not grow in your knowledge and understanding of his word. You just won't. That would be just like going to that gym. Okay, you go once a month now. That's fantastic. You feel better about that. That once a month is not going to get you the result you're looking for. You may feel better about it. And you may feel like, well, now I've got the card and I've been there within the last 70 days. But you know what? God calls us to be in his word. And we've got to make a commitment that outside of this time on Sunday night, we're going to get in his word and find out what his word's telling us. Number two thing that he expects from us. We should be serving him in a way that uses the gifts that he's given to us. This is one of those things in Romans chapter 12, 4 to 6. It says this, Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. Do you know that because you're a part of XL, there are certain things at XL that you do that nobody else does well? I know some of you are thinking, yeah, dude, if you just shut up, I could preach and do a lot better than you do. Let me know when you want to do that and we'll work that in. But you have a gift. When you give your life to Christ, you are given a gift from the Holy Spirit that is for the purpose of building the church and building the body of Christ. And for you to come here on a Sunday night and come here for two years and three years and sit and, and enjoy but not do something with that gift, you're cheating the body of Christ by not using your gift. So what is your area? We, we joke about it all the time at XL. You come three weeks and then you get a job. But in your heart, in your mind, in your thought process, how long have you been here? How long have you been going to church? How long have you been calling yourself a believer? How long have you been a believer? without using the gifts that God calls you to use to build his family. Because that's what this is. We are God's family. We are the body of Christ, and it is our job to help each other do our part to grow this family. That's why we're doing this series right now, because I want to talk to you over the next four weeks about what XL is to look like, where we're headed for the future, and what we're going to go do to see people meet Jesus. And what we're going to do to help people connect to that God that's got a great, wonderful plan for their life. We're going to do that together as one body. But every person on the team, every person in the body has got to do their part. Because if one part doesn't work, the rest of the body suffers automatically. Third thing is this, expectations. We should be sharing our story with others about how Jesus has changed our lives. We did a, a series not too long ago just talking about uh, sharing our story and, and heard some incredible stories. And talked about what it means to be sharing our story with other people to see Jesus change them. But guys, if you come here on a Sunday night and you enjoy our time together and, and clap for the band and, and suffer through the teaching and enjoy the, the beverage and whatever, and then Monday to Saturday you're not telling anybody about Jesus, we're missing it. 
Because we're not here to hug on each other and love on each other. We're here to go get other people that won't go anywhere else. So our job and our goal and our passion should be t constantly telling our story to people that don't know Jesus. Philemon 1.6 says this, I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of everything we have in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? That means if you're not active in sharing your faith, you're not truly understanding all the blessing of Jesus. Because he uses your story to grow his kingdom. So as we look at that and we look at where is the beef in your life, what are you doing for Christ every day to show that you have a relationship with him? What are you doing at XL to show that you have a relationship and that you're using your gifts to get there? Because a challenge over these next weeks will be very simple. What are you going to do every Sunday, every Monday, every Tuesday? How are you going to share your story? Who are you going to tell the story to? How are we going to help people grow God's kingdom? What are we going to do to help XL be everything it's supposed to be? So that God's kingdom will grow. Because that's the focus. That's the ultimate purpose. So the challenge is simple for you. Are you in his word? Are you using his gifts? Are you studying and learning and, and sharing his story every chance you get? Because if you're not, you're in that same position as these guys were in. You're drinking milk when you should be eating and teaching others God's word. That's where we have to go tonight. The band's going to come back up, and they're going to do another song, and, it, and it's specifically picked for this spot. It's the song called Motions, going through the motions, and it talks about the concept of just going through the motions every day and not ever actually uh, achieving what God's called you to achieve. I want to pray for us and then they'll lead us in this one more. God, we love you and we thank you for time together tonight. And we pray that you'll teach us, even as we continue to sing and hear, teach us what it means, God, to not just to go through the motions, but to see actual activity in our lives for you. It's in Jesus' name that we give you that. Amen.